Hello, this is Warlord. Today we're going to take a look at using images, image layers, and image planes to see what kind of a scene we can make. This is actually a rehash of a tutorial I did in version 5, but I get asked about redoing it in version 7. So, let's get started. Okay, here are the images we're going to be using. I've made a background image in view, and I have taken some actual 3D assets and rented them out with iRay into a PNG so that we can use them for a cutout. So we'll go ahead and get started by just dragging those in. We'll drag in the city background like we normally do with our left mouse button. But the first time that we drag in one of our cutouts, we're going to click it with our right mouse button. Now hear me again with our right mouse button. Drag it over and release and you'll get a menu. What you want to use from here is plain. So we'll do this with the other, again, the right mouse button, plain. Now you could use billboard and it'll always face you, but I like plain just because that way I can tell what's going on. Let me drag in the third one here, also to a plain. Now, now's a good time to line up our grid. You don't really have to do this, but it's something I'm used to doing and it just kind of makes it a little easier. Just to, kind of, just to line it up a little bit. Anyway, I'll bring these forward. And these are just like I told you they are. They're just cutouts. Now, from here, that one looks like it's all right. I'm going to lock it. That's the middle one there. Let's see. It's going to need to go down. Then I'm going to scale it. Lock it. Now these are actually 19, 1920 by 1080 renders. So, uh, they're actually taking up the whole screen, which is why you see this line over here, things like that. So what I'm going to do here is give some scaling, and then we'll go down, and a little more scaling. I'm just trying to put something in front and behind, so to speak with the rendered out image being the background and then something for a little bit of depth even though they're just 2D images this will be our foreground now I'm going to lock it and you don't have to lock these but this is in case we decide to do something else we won't accidentally move them this is also a single shot or a single frame shot you're not going to be able to rotate or anything all you can do is move forward or maintain the shot uh, mainly because the background won't rotate or move with you. So anyway from here let's go into visual and let's see we've already got ambient inclusion on turn on tone map cut down the white a little and then we've got a light source over here so let's use it let's go ahead and bring this back and kind of flood it out with a little bit of light And then let's go down here and change this out. And what I do is I usually go up one into the IBL folder, uh, grab something that's close to blue, but what I kind of want is a bluish green. So I am just going to come up here and make a little bit of a change till we get what we want. And that will kind of blend the front of them a little bit better. Now we've got this far, and this is looking good, but it's really too sharp in the background since we have fog, or excuse me, too sharp in the foreground since we have fog in the background. These buildings here are awfully clear, while these, of course, are covered in smog. So what I'm going to do is what we would do if we were using After Effects or anything like that, particularly in the old days when all we had was color. I'm just going to use a solid color. You can make these colors in Photoshop or anything like that, I'm going to right click, drag it over, 
let it up, and I'm going to select Image Layer. And then I'm going to cover up everything. Then we'll come over here and use our opacity to blend that in a little more. Now, if you don't think that helps, just come over here and turn it off and have a look. And as you can see, there's quite a few blending options here. You can even come in, if you want to, and grab something like a green color and put it over also as an image layer. And do the same thing. Or even play around with the combination of all that. But I tend to like the blue better. And get on the right one here. And however much opacity you give it is basically how foggy or how much it's going to blend in. And to me that just looks quite a bit better. And the good thing is we have a whopping 356 faces. We hadn't even hit 1K. So this makes a pretty good establishing shot right here. Now when I said earlier this is a fixed shot. Since you have these three props, you can do a little bit of a shot here. I mean, you can do a little bit of movement here. So what you'd want to do is come in and create a camera so you can move it and save it. And I would take this all the way to the last keyframe so it will be slow. And then I would just move it forward a little. Remember, your background is not going to move with you. Oh, maybe a little more. And we'll do that. Now, another thing I noticed. Let me get to the right one. This one right here, I could see a double outline on. I need to hit the alpha threshold. Cut off a bit of the antenna. This would just be uh, your call if you wanted to do that or not. And now we do have a little bit of a moving shot that kind of blends and it makes a decent opening shot or establishing shot. And that was not that hard to make at all. And don't worry, we're not going to hit the building because remember, we didn't go that far. Now I would avoid going beside a building because it is a 2D cutout. And we may have pushed it a little far just, just by going this much. But you can see from here that it's not a load on the engine at all. This was very simple to set up. And it makes a pretty nice shot. Now you can go over to Turbo Squid and get this Corvette. Let me dump it in. And move it. Anyway, you can go over there and get this for free. And it'll add just a little more. A little more to the image. Now, you notice how we're going off camera? Okay, that's, that's easily solved. Come up here, hit your camera. And come down here and add one more nine. And then you'll see that your camera space grows. That's always a nice little tip to have too. It's one of those things that you just don't hear that much about. Anyway, this would be something that you would just place in there however you wanted to. I'm just kind of using it to add a little more. And ratchet up our bump map a little bit. Of course, it'd be up to you however you place it. One other thing that I almost forgot, like these two buildings that you can see visible lights on, select one of them, come over here and copy it, go to glow and paste it and then you can come back 
cut your glow back a little and you'll still have a little more prominent lighting on it. We're going to do the same thing on this one. And there you can see that gives you a little more lighting. Anyway, I hope this helps.